half a day. And welcome to Coffee with the Candidates. This series was created to educate and inform Guam's voting population on the positions candidates running for office take on some of the island's most controversial topics. In this episode, we sit down with two senatorial candidates, Democrat Therese Terlahi and Republican Ken Joada. Coffee with the Candidates continues after this. Half a day, my name's Polly X Suba of Cat FM, and you're watching Coffee with the Candidates. I'm sitting to my right with the Vice Speaker, Therese Terlai, and she's looking to uh, be a Senator again for the 35th Legislature. Half a day, Senator. Half a day, Polly. Good to meet you. Thank you for having us uh, yeah. here. This opportunity is great, and I'm trying my best. <laughs> Once again, I just want to thank you so much for uh, being here today for Coffee with the Candidates. Um, the fact that you're vice speaker already as, as a freshman senator, that impresses me a whole lot. Um, was it something that you, because I, I didn't follow it much uh, when, when it happened, but it's got to be pretty overwhelming just to, to be a senator and then now to have that role. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's a big responsibility. and. Mm -hmm. um, there was just a big shift at the legislature right. last term when, when seven of them mm -hmm. went out. I think that was unexpected. So everything from then on was unexpected even. Right. But uh, we just had to step up and do our best. <laughs> right, so you definitely had to hit the ground running. Was it something that you were more than willing to or was this something that you had, it, it was almost uh, voluntold? No, I, no. I, um, I was, very honored to right. have that uh, position. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a vote by my colleagues, and so I was very right. honored. And uh, I, I know it comes with a lot of responsibility, and right. and you become the you know one of the faces of the legislature. Like you right. represent Guam, and you represent the people. So I just felt like we have to. I, I just wanted to. Right. I was honored to do that. So I don't mind the work. Right. Uh, well, you're doing an excellent job as senator, well, and, and even more so vice speaker. Oh wow! Thank you. Um, very much. So, how do you manage your time? You know, like uh, for me, I love weekend. I look forward to weekends where uh, I do nothing because nothing is something to me. So, how would you manage such a busy schedule? Um, it's busy, mm. and I have to admit, I think uh, I work very hard, and my staff works very hard. And it, the surprising thing, maybe, is that uh, yes, we. So many topics are coming right. across our desk, and we I've tried to make myself an expert in all of these topics mm -hmm. in order, if we're gonna vote on something, I want to know everything right. there is to know about it. That's kind of my my modus, right? That's how I wanna operate. So um, that's why we do a lot of work. We right. prep for hearings, and we, we go to as many hearings as absolutely possible and ask questions, mm -hmm. and even though sometimes they're tough, you know, and sometimes these some of the agencies are not very, um, open sure. and I, I, I feel like we need to just encourage that. Mm -hmm. the, the better the agencies, the, the more open they are, the more the people of Guam are going to know, the more the people of Guam know, the better they're going to be able to participate in their government and that's one of my goals. So. Right. You talk about how you, you have a heavy workload. Uh, what are some of the things that you definitely want to champion uh, coming up in the, the new legislature? Oh, thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. um, I still think that the government could use a little bit more transparency. Okay. And so that's that was always one of my goals and I think I've done a, a good job of, you know, putting some policies in place. For example, we we made a bill that made that uh, rules and regulations are going to have more scrutiny, mm -hmm. no more default without a public hearing at least. Mm -hmm. And and the economic impacts of rules and regulations we're going to try to force those to be done. They've been waived so many times in the past and I don't think that's responsible. Right. So, and the other thing is that court decisions now, we require that they be published, even the lower courts, and searchable so mm -hmm. that all people in business and everyone, you know, just in their daily lives can know what the courts are deciding, how they are interpreting the laws. And it very much helps us as policymakers because if that's not how we thought the law should, should be, then we need to right. fix it. Right, and then 
being a parent of three, uh, I see prices going up, cost of living is, is uh, getting, uh, I'm starting to really have to budget my life, you know, uh, more so. How do you see us moving forward as an island of Guam uh, dealing with the cost of living? I think it's, it's one of the biggest challenges that we mm -hmm. face right now, mm -hmm. right? When um, we need to face the fiscal challenges that we are having with, with facts. Right. We need all the facts out on the table. Nobody can be hiding anything. We need the real truth, mm -hmm. you know, not, not uh, what sounds popular right. or, or anything like that. And I really believe that if we can force the truth out, then, then we're all, we all want what's good for Guam and we're all gonna work hard for that. Right. And we're gonna sacrifice. We, we've seen the generations before us sacrifice. We know we have to sacrifice, but I don't think, I don't believe in sacrificing like children living in poverty. Right. No way, I mean, that's, that's where we've got to draw the line. So we've got to make sure that cost of living does not make these children live in poverty, does not force working families that they can't right. even take care of their own families. So, so no, we have to address all these things. And, and the taxes that are being proposed, I think we have to scrutinize them mm -hmm. um, with a fine tooth comb. And, right. and we can't fall for fear Mm -hmm. We can't fall for, um, you know, uh, just showcasing that right. all of that is, it seems old school to me and we right. got to get rid of it in order to really move forward together. And, mm -hmm. and I really still believe we can move forward together, but we just have to get to that point where they are willing to give up the, give me more power and give me more secretness and give me more money right. and uh, I will take care of it. I, I don't believe in that. I think right. put it all on the table and and show us what you want to do and, and let it be scrutinized, not right. just by you know, policymakers, but by the people. Right. The more it's scrutinized, you can find people are so smart, they're gonna come up with better ideas. Well, there's a number of issues right now in uh, the news, whether you're looking at print, whether you're watching on TV uh, with PNC and whatnot. Um, what are some of, what are the uh, issues that are most important, whether it be GMH right now or uh, the, um, decolonization of Guam and such. Are these things very important in your next uh, run or are there other issues? Um, these things are very important. Uh, I think these things, they work together. You right. know, um, our status and our ability to implement economic policies that are going to control, you know, our, our, our future, mm -hmm. that uh, we have to fight for those right now. It's, it's very obvious that the United States is not gonna give those up to us. We need to fight for them. We need to fight for control of our natural resources in order to have a future, in right. order to have a healthy future, especially because we're still fighting for justice in, in things like you know, contamination right. or, or you know, the Jones Act and, or even war claims. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm actually going to um, DC because we're gonna have, for the first time ever, a Senate hearing on the uh, Radiation Exposure Compensation Act where we've asked them to include Guam. Wow. So they're compensating people for, who were exposed to, to nuclear radiation right. from testing from, by the United States, and, and Guam has been shown that they suffered from radiation right. exposure and cancer rates are much higher here. And so we're hoping that we're gonna be successful this year. It's historic, first time ever right. to have a hearing. Yeah. So this being your first year, you're going for your, I mean, I'm sorry, your first uh, term, you're going for your second term now. Yes. Is there unfinished business? Well, some of these issues that have been longstanding with the United States, I think we need to address, yes. Right. I think also, of course, look, our fiscal status is changing daily daily we just had a hearing this morning i mean so so it changes daily we need to adjust with the information that's coming in and we're only now learning the impact of these the trump you know the united states congress's tax reform and right. how that impacts us so so every day we've got to put that information back into the solution right and yes and but but like you said there are issues that also go on um and we're talking about patient care you right. know gmh i mean we can talk about it as if it's you know politics or mm -hmm. corruption or things like that, but I really think there are very hardworking employees there. Mm -hmm. I know them, and they've they've dedicated their lives to doing that, and I really respect that. So I hate to see that that we start to discuss and that is impacting patient care. Right. I think we've really got to stop and draw the line there.
Right, uh, bringing up GMH, so uh, have we set up a timeline of such to uh, get things in order? Well, I think um, we are pushing for that, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, we, we've got an October deadline of right. losing Medicare, yes. so I don't think there's any more important <laughs> timeline than that. Right. I mean, we need everything that we can do before right. that. We need the solutions and, and the data. Right. And um, of course, you've seen it's, it's been difficult to get. And, right. and it's not just GMH, it's so many agencies sure. of the government, they're still operating as if, you know, they want to protect information. Right. And, and I just feel like that's a disservice to the people right. of Guam. We've got to get that information out right. so we can act faster, so we can all get to the solution right. faster. Well, the people's work is never done, right? Mm -hmm. I, I congratulate you on a job well done with the first two years. Thank um, you. There, is there anything else that you would like to share with the few minutes that we have uh, for your chance to become a senator again for the 35th legislature? Well, I'm, I've just been really grateful. I've been so honored. I, it's been um, really an honor to represent the people of Guam mm -hmm. because they've been so kind mm -hmm. and so um, willing to get involved. And mm -hmm. I, I really love that. And I think we owe them so much. And I, I want to do the best I can for them. I think, um, you know, there's been so many good leaders before us and, I, and I, they inspire me to right. not be afraid to stand alone when you have to because really you're standing with the people of Guam. Yes. And, and if I remember that, then, then I can do it, you know? Right. And I, I admire courage that has gone before me and so I try to be courageous as I can and not be afraid to ask questions or to fight for what I believe in. Right. Thank you, Vice Thank Speaker. Thank you, Paul. Yes. I really appreciate this. Yes, no worries. Uh, it's an honor to meet you, ma'am. Uh, there you go. We are Coffee with the Candidates. My name is Polly X. Suba, and this is Vice Speaker Therese Terlai. She's looking for a seat in the 35th legislature under the Democrat Party, right? Yes, yes that's correct. There you go. We'll be right back. Once again, you are watching Coffee with the Candidates. My name is Polly X. Suba. Welcome back to Coffee with the Candidates. My name is Polly Suba, and I am now here with uh, Mayor Ken Joe Ada of Jotnya. Um, real former quick, mayor. Former, former used right. To be. <laughs> of course, but the title stays. The title never goes away. But if we want to be formal, I was just yeah. really grateful for it. Yeah. You know, really to be able to uh, really just get down and see it all for myself and be a part of it, you know? Right. And uh, that's what the people of Jotnia taught me uh, over the past four years. And uh, I feel I've evolved to something where I can actually give back even in a greater capacity. Right. And so uh, I took myself off the internet for two years, no cell phone for two years, and uh, tried to answer some really hard forward moving questions about Guam. Okay. So for example, uh, what happens if we don't get any federal funding? Uh-huh. What happens? <laughs> so the plot thickens. Right. And you sit down and write out the answer of what happens. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, let's say, let's say it really does happen. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? So what I'm saying is we have to have foresight. And um, activity is necessary mm -hmm. for this to happen, but I believe we as a people living and working here on Guam, uh, especially the human organism on mm -hmm. Guam, uh, we have the ability to do something great together. I really, truly believe this. So we're talking about the, the uh, plebiscite, right? No. No. I'm talking about independence. Right, choosing and, to be uh, independent. But I'm very sure about it now. Ah. How did you come to the conclusion? <sighs> uh, just watching everything unfold over time, mm. over where we're at now, how much we've proven we depended on the federal government and on the local government right. as a people. And when I'm saying this, I, I'm talking to the, the sacred blood that runs through everybody on this island mm -hmm. that was in Menangit uh, after World War II. Uh, everybody kind of, all the Chamorro people kind of went their separate ways and uh, pursued the dream. Mm -hmm. but. We all knew we had to come back together and talk. And I believe now's the time. Right. 
And uh, it's a celebration of everybody now on Guam uh, who's uh, absorbed and taken on the, the tomorrow spirit. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's taking a new form because uh, we have the Chukis kids in our schools that we're teaching them the Chamorro culture. So by virtue of exposure, they belong to us. And uh, I believe that I see a beautiful Guam growing with everybody in it that's integrated uh, by virtue of the Chamorro spirit. Right. And uh, I think we can also create activity. Mm -hmm. uh, on a larger economic scale amongst the actual living, working people on Guam. So, and uh, that's my message. Right, is this gonna be something that uh, you're going to pursue as senator in the 35th legislature? Yes. You're gonna be, so to speak, <laughs> championing the Chamorro culture? Well, not necessarily so. I don't, I don't wanna say champion, I wanna say rather appreciate the point of view mm. that I've uh, come up with. Right. And uh, find out for yourself, you know. Uh, and if it's something that you think uh, is very viable for our island, right. uh, there you go. That's what I bring to the table. Yes. So, Mr. Ken Joada, you're so talented in, in, in so many aspects, most especially in music. Thank you. Right? <laughs> and Music past, defines me. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we have Senator Louise Munya. We call her the singing senator yeah, and such. She's so lovely. Are you going to be uh, singing senator junior? Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I always believed in it, never keeping your music inside. Right. You know, so whenever there's an opportunity, uh, somebody says, hey, can you play such and such mm -hmm. or do this and that? Uh, you never know how far a song can go for right. somebody. So um, that's my obligation right. as a performer and as an artist. Speaking of obligation, because I do work hand in hand with a lot of uh, musicians, right? Yes. Uh, being an MC in, in a number of gigs and then working with all these amazing musicians. Is mm -hmm. there anything that you could do to help uh, musicians ah. move forward in the legislature? Yes, I believe that um, in the world, mm. in order to fully be recognized as a single people, you would have to perpetuate a culture. Mm -hmm. And artists and music and songwriting and storytelling and everything that the human organism that is perpetuating about our culture and their culture in Guam right. is the answer. So what I'm saying is uh, we decolonize through recolonizing by giving those people the, the needed funding, yes. I'll say it, to lift it up and share it to the world. Guam, Guam is going global. Right, uh, so we can do this all on our own? Are there... Everybody uh, at the table will help okay. answer the question. But uh, what is necessary is the parameters and the playing field. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time. Right, I, I definitely think it's, uh, it's time. Uh, being that you are a former mayor of Jonya, yes. and you said that you took time away from I, social uh, media and I whatnot. called mayor uh, research and development. Yeah, <laughs> I like it, I like Pretty it. Pretty much. Uh, I've seen uh, good people do bad and I've seen bad people do good. Mm. And uh, you know, you just try and take it all in, you know, and you realize these are actual people. Right. <laughs> feeling this and uh, I, uh, I can identify with so much of it because uh, even through my walks of life and my life story and where I've been and what I've done, um, there's more to it, man. Right. There's way more to it. And uh, I think that's what makes us so unique. Ironically, it's going to be our culture, yeah. our island, the spirit, and the air and everything that's going to set Guam free, ironically. Right. Uh, you're talking about uh, good people doing bad things, bad people, bad thing. Uh, bad people doing good things. Yes. Uh, care to speak on some of the uh, corruption <coughs> uh, stories that are in the news as far as government corruption? Uh, I'll try to give you a more holistic view. Sure. Uh, in life, mm -hmm. I think uh, if you're living, you should die. If you're smart, you should get dumb. And if you're poor, you should get rich. And if you're dumb, you should get smart. And if you're dead, 
you should get alive. Mm. So that way you're whole. And when uh, death finds you, there's nothing to kill because you're already obliterated. Very interesting stuff. Uh, is this something that you think will, um, will other people, other of your colleagues that make it into the 35th legislature? I hope will so. I, I wish that I, I, I want to see Guam shaken up and um, be aware of who we really are as a people. Right. Truly aware of who we are and mm -hmm. um, push it forward and right. be proud of it. Right. So we spoke about the Chamorro culture. Uh, elevating the music in, on Guam. Of course, and that's the only way right. it's possible. Right. Are, are there, is there anything uh, when you, if you were to become senator in the 35th legislature that you would be focusing a lot of your energy on or would it just be those two? Well, the, a lot of things has to unfold first. Okay. So for example, uh, best way I could describe it mm. would be, uh, let's say in kindergarten, right? Hey, right. Go to first grade. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, you get to high school, and but in high school they give you the answers in the back of the book, right? Right. right. Uh, and that's very interesting because you're in some ways conditioned to always produce an answer, mm -hmm. and the reality is, is uh, sometimes the answer is still unfolding, mm -hmm. and it's okay to say the answer is still unfolding. Right. So in order for me to get to that position, I would at first have to win an right. election. So I won't uh, talk about something right. hypothetical. Well, we know you're going to get all the votes in Jotnia, <laughs> per se. I, you know, I love Jotnia. Yeah. I mean, it was a, they're, they're a tough crowd. <laughs> but uh, they really fortified what I wanted to do for this island. They gave me a better picture of what I'm, uh, I stand by, uh -huh. uh, what I believe in, uh, what it's all about, and um, like I said, if you're rich, get poor. Right. Uh, speaking of poor, what do you think about the cost of living on Guam? How can we, what can we do? <laughs> the only way uh, I foresee Guam, uh, well, you want to hear it? Sure, yes, that's why I have you here. Okay, so this is how I see it happening. I'm just going to be as casual as possible yes, because I think everybody should be aware about what I've been thinking about and talking about and uh, what a perfect platform. And by the way, I spent two years again uh, working on this. Right. So um, I have a minute or so. Okay. Yeah. Sure. But you know, I mean, you can edit whatever you right. want. if those who ever want to stick around. But basically what I'm saying is, I propose we open a tourist casino. Okay. Uh, but hold on before you throw any stones at me. <laughs> because a lot of people, let, let's, we need to die, understand what I'm saying. Sure. Uh, we have to, I propose we open a tourist casino and uh, however, if the people of Guam allow this, mm -hmm. they would own half of all the revenue coming in from the casino. But we would actually have to shape it in the form of a contract. So you sell the contract on the market mm. first. They buy the contract, then negotiations begin. What if we sold a contract for $1 billion on the open market? So essentially what I'm saying is, we're taking a trade, mm. we're selling it to the world, we lock it up in Tumon and say, yes, gambling is still illegal. In fact, right. we fortify the laws to make it even more dangerous to get caught right. gambling outside of Tumon because you're stealing from the people of Guam. Now, in that manner, so how do you distribute 500 million cash to the people of Guam? Well, we definitely need 500 million. We need so, all the so money. So the we math kind of right? breaks down like this: about 150,000 people. Divide that by 500 million, it comes out to about 3.3 .3 million per household, if you allow it. Right. So decolonization through recolonization. So you take that check home and make the dream happen. Thank you so much for coming in, uh, hanging out with me here Thank on you. Coffee with the Candidates. My name is Polly Suba. This is Mayor Kenjo Ada. Hey. Hopefully we'll call him senator in the 35th legislature. It's up to you, though. 
Once again, you are tuned in to Coffee with the Candidates. Also want to thank uh, Vice Speaker Therese Terlai for being here with us as well. Have a great day. Thank you.